Although I've chosen a title of rationalizing the denominator for this video, this is really just a continuation of solving quadratics using square roots. The problem is, is that sometimes when you take the square root of the denominator, uh, it's not a pretty answer. And you get, end up having a, a value that we call irrational. All right, so we, we, what we would like to do then is we want to learn to rationalize the denominator. What does that mean exactly? Let me give you an example. Say you had the square root of 3 sevenths. Well, there's really not much you can do to uh, simplify it. We could at least break it into two pieces. Square root of 3 over the square root of 7. And what we're going to say at the high school level is, well, you know what? We have a problem with having a square root in the denominator. Uh, you should understand that that number is what we call irrational. It's a non-repeating, non-terminating decimal. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a way of re-expressing the value of this fraction in a way that doesn't change its value, but changes the way it looks. So that's what we're going to talk about. My suggestion at this point would be to press pause and copy this entire box and this entire box. All right. Press pause now. Copy that into your notes. Again, I expect everything in this video to be on your notes. Let me correct myself. In your notes. Okay, seriously. Press pause. Now what I'm going to use is the addition of fractions with unlike denominators to sort of help you understand why we're about to do what we're going to do when we rationalize denominators. So right now I'm not rationalizing denom denominators. I'm just showing you something else. We can't add these two fractions because they don't have the same denominator. And so we need a common denominator, which will be 6. But the question is, what's 1 half worth of, or what value of 1 half is the same as something over 6? So you say, well, what do you multiply 2 by to become 6? You multiply 2 by 3. So whatever I do on the top, I do on the bottom. So 3 6 is the same as 1 half. That's pretty easy to see. I would multiply the 1 third by 2 on top and bottom to get 2 6. Now, how do you know what's right? 2 6 reduces to 1 third. 3 6 reduces to 1 half. And so what do we end up with? We end up with a value of 5 sixths. So 1 half plus 1 third equals 5 sixths. Okay. Now that we've had the conversation about how to change the way a fraction looks without changing its value, we can talk about this fraction. Right Up here, we have that if the form of the denominator is in the square root of b, square root of 3, then we would multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of b, which is its conjugate. So the conjugate is going to be the square root of 3. I'm just multiplying by the square root of 3. Why? Well, on the top, I'm going to get 2 times the square root of 3. But now on the bottom, I could recognize that as the square root of 3 times 3, which is 2 radical 3 over the square root of 9, which is 2 radical 3 over 3. And what do we have now? We have ourself the same value fraction as originally uh, stated at the beginning, but there is no radical in the denominator. Therefore, we have a rational denominator, or what we have done is rationalize the denominator. There you go. Set us up with a couple more examples. First, at the top here, we have 3 divided by the square root of 5. Well, the square root of 5 is not a perfect square, therefore we have an irrational number to the denominator. So what we're going to do is multiply by its conjugate. So the conjugate of square root of 5 is just the square root of 5. On the top, we're going to get 3 radical 5. On the bottom, we're going to get radical 25, which is 3 radical 5 over 5. Now be careful, these 5s don't cancel out because this 5 up here is inside the radical. So it's sort of a protected unit. So this answer is just 3 radical 5 over 5. That's it. It has no value that is any different than this one, the beginning, right? These are the same value. You can check it on your calculator. It's just that the visual representation is different. Okay, well, how about the one on the bottom? This isn't the same thing. So we have to re-express this as radical 3 over radical 5. Now this is a little easier. I want to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator, right? It's the denominator I have a problem with, not that numerator. 
we're rationalizing the denominator. So up on the top now, that's going to be radical 3 times 5, which is radical 15, over radical 25, which is radical 15, over 5. So these have the same value. And again, you can check it on your calculator. Same gig. Square root of 15 doesn't have any perfect squares in it, so it can't be broken down. And I know at this point you're thinking, why? Well, I don't have a good reason why. All I could tell you is that when we go to solve using square roots, the skill that we have here is going to help out. It's also going to help out when we solve using completing the square. So just bear with me. We've got a lot of square root stuff coming up. For this example, I have the same exact problem written. I'm just going to take care of it in two different ways. First, I'm just going to say, well, you know what? This is 4 over the square root of 8, which is... 4 times 2, right? So that's going to be 4 over square root of 4 is 2, radical 2. And now the problem is, is this radical 2 is a problem, so I'm just going to multiply by radical 2 on top and bottom. Because the conjugate of radical 2 is radical 2. What about the 2 out in the front here and the denominator? Not my problem. It doesn't bother me. When I go to multiply on top and bottom, what's going to happen? On the top, I'm going to get 4 radical 2. On the bottom, I'm going to get 4, I'm sorry, 2 times radical 4, which is just 2, which is 4 radical 2 all over 4, which is just radical 2 is our final answer. Go ahead. Check the value of this in your calculator. Check the value of radical 2 in your calculator. Tell me if I'm incorrect. Seriously, go ahead, check it out. You'll see that both have an approximate value of 1.41 blah, 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 blah. Why did I write this out twice? Because some of you are just going to look at this and go, oh, you know what? Instead of, you know, reducing it here and, and going about it this way, why not just take it and multiply by the square root of 8 on top and bottom? Well, you could do that. You're going to get 4 radical 8 on the top. You're going to get radical 64 on the bottom. This 4 radical 8 is going to be 4 times 2 radical 2. And on the bottom, you're going to have 8. 4 times 2 is 8, cancels out 8, and you're left with radical 2. What's wrong with the bottom one? The bottom one is everything's starting to get a little bit too big and too out of control. And you know my opinion. Reduce first. Break down that 8 like I did up at the top here. Break down that radical 8 into something simpler so that you can multiply by smaller numbers on top and bottom. Make your life easier, not more difficult. Okay, well, you know that you had seen a couple other things there in that conjugate list. Yes, what happens when the denominator is uh, a little bit more complicated and has two numbers that are separated by addition and subtraction? Well, it's more complicated. So the conjugate of a plus radical b will be a minus radical b. And the conjugate of a minus radical b will be a plus radical b. Why? Let's just take uh, this bottom one. And let's foil them, right? Because that's what's going to happen when you multiply by a conjugate. You're going to multiply. So the same thing happens no matter which pair of these you choose to multiply. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to foil the bottom of this. a times a is a squared. And a times positive radical b is positive a radical b. Okay? I'm going to move to the center piece here. Negative, b time, negative radical b times a is minus a radical b. And negative radical b times radical b is minus radical b squared. All right, now let's combine our like terms. What happens? This guy cancels out this one, and you got a squared minus radical b squared, which is just a squared minus b. Ah, beautiful. No more radicals. See? Let's try it in practice now. So we have 2 over 3 plus radical 2. So our conjugate first, and treat this as one unit here, is going to be 3 minus radical 2. Whatever I multiply by the top or bottom, i got to multiply on both top and bottom to keep the fraction value the same. Okay, so now across the top, I'm just going to distribute. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times minus radical 2 is minus 2 radical 2. All over what? Now we're going to foil this out. 3 times 3 is 9. And then you're going to get, 
Now here's the cool part. You're going to get a plus 3 radical 2 and a minus 3 radical 2. And yeah, that's a little sketchy there. And then minus radical 4, because radical 2 times radical 2 is radical 4. Now what happens here? Nice little magic. This should cancel out every time. And eventually I'm going to stop writing it, and I'm just going to write the 3 times 3 and the radical 2 times radical 2. And I'm left with this at the bottom. What happens on the top? Well, 6 minus 2 radical 2 is what it is. Please don't say it's 4 radical 2. This piece is attached by multiplication, and since I can't multiply them, I can't subtract that product from 6. I'm just going to leave it as is. But the 9 minus radical 4 is going to be 9 minus 2, which is 6 minus 2 radical 2 all over 7. Jim Dandy. So this is the new value of the original fraction here. Right? These guys right here, they have the same value. And again, I know what you're thinking. This is stupid. The complexity of this just went from the denominator to the numerator. I'm with you. Again, I said at the very beginning of the year, I was going to ask you to do a lot of things on faith that it was good for your brain, whether you're a math major or not. Okay? Last example. Last of the torture. We have a 2 plus radical 7 in the denominator. So our denominator has an irrational value in it. So I'm going to multiply by its conjugate, which is going to be 2. I'll use white here. 2 minus radical 7 on top and bottom. Now again, I would suggest slapping some parentheses around all your binomials so you don't mess this up. And now let's carefully go through this. Right, 5 times 2 is 10 minus 5 radical 7. And across the bottom, let's try that little streamlined version. I know my two middle terms are going to cancel out. So my first term times first term is 4. Then you're going to get plus some stuff. And then you're going to get minus some stuff. And then you're going to have minus radical 49. And again... That stuff, maybe I should just talk about it for a second, is going to be a plus 2 radical 7 minus, whoops, minus 2 radical 7. And that cancels out. So there really is no need to write that every time. I'm going to tend to just say 10 minus 5 radical 7 on the top, and then 4 minus radical 49, right? I'm just sort of speeding up the process. 10 minus 5 radical 7 all over 4 minus 7 which is equal to, for a final answer, of 10 minus 5 radical 7 all over negative 3. Bada boom. That's it. We'll practice more of these in class.